<laughs> Good morning, Facebook Live. Welcome to Bring the Zoo to You here at Brookfield Zoo. My name's Craig, and I'm one of the animal care specialists here at Hamill Family Wild Encounters, Hamill Play Zoo, and our ambassador program. And today I want to talk to you guys about unique feet. So as you know, animals have to have ways to get around, and many of those animals have hands and feet to do that. But what you might not know is that a lot of animals have extra special adaptations on their feet to do more than just go from here to there. So a lot of times that can come in the form of extra digits or a modified bone or extra fur or claws or even a way they can move their feet and that will help them live where they live, eat what they eat and even protect themselves. So to demonstrate this stuff today, I'm going to introduce our keeper Katie with our red panda Leo and over here we have keepers Scott and Jen with our two of our reindeer, Josie and Sagu. So looking back at the red panda, just a little bit of information, these guys come from central China, Nepal, and northern Myanmar in mountainous areas. So they are arboreal, which means that they live in the trees. So as you're looking at these guys, and you may have tuned in the last couple days to learn about camouflage and prehensile tails, you might be wondering why his tail is so bushy and, and just laying there right now, or his coloration is very bright red. So while these guys don't have prehensile tails, they do use them for balance, but helping him climb in the trees even more important are his feet, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And of course, he is a bright red coloration, so he wouldn't really blend into this exhibit that you're seeing here, but where they come from in the wild, the trees that they live on are covered in a lot of red moss and white lichen. So from above, he blends in really well with the trees, but then the black coloration underneath keeps him harder to see from, from down on the ground. So Katie's doing a training session with him right now. She's going to be asking him to stand up. She's able to touch his feet, look at his stomach and stuff like that. But this is a good way that we can show you some of the things about his feet that make him special. So like the giant panda, the red panda does have what we call a faux thumb. And basically it's just a modified wrist bone. And that lets him hold on to the bamboo that he likes to eat and also makes it easier for him to climb in the tree branches. One of the behaviors that he's trained to do, which we're not going to demonstrate today, but um, that gives us an opportunity to show guests what they can do with their feet as a, a painting behavior. So he's actually trained to grab a paintbrush and hold it and, and paint on a piece of paper with it. Um, and then for their other adaptations on their feet, they do have really sharp claws. They're retractable like a cat and that helps him climb, but it also helps him defend himself. So if he were threatened, he will stand up on his hind legs and slash out with his front feet to try and um, scare off or even attack something coming after him. On the bottoms of their feet, they don't have paw pads like other animals do, but they are covered in fur. And so that helps them, um, gives them insulation from the cold, but also gives them a little, a little bit extra grip on slippery surfaces when they're climbing around on their mossy branches. They also have scent glands on the soles of their feet, um, which will help them mark their territory. And another cool thing about the red panda is they're one of the few animals that'll climb down a pretty much vertical tree face first. And what lets them do that is they can rotate their ankles 180 80 degrees around so that can help them grip with their back legs as they're shimming down the tree. And so with all of these paw adaptations, red pandas are actually very quick, very agile animals. And even though he's super cuddly looking and he's pretty friendly, these are a deceptively dangerous animal. They are classified as a carnivore, even though they only eat bamboo primarily, um, but they will eat insects or even small mammals as necessary. So they do have really sharp teeth. So before we move on to the reindeer, if you guys wanted to chime in and let us know some of your favorite animals and some of their cute little feetsies, feel free to do so. I think Leo might be, he might be coming back. He really loves his training sessions and his keepers, but most of all he's eating craisins right now and that's his favorite treat. So, so a question, why is his tail so long? They use those long tails to help them balance because they aren't, they don't have prehensile tails, but the length of the tail will help him keep his balance as he's running back and forth. Um, but they also, it's actually pretty cute if you guys come and see them on exhibit, they'll wrap their tail around to their head and use it as like a blanket or a pillow as they sleep. 
The question is, what do they eat? So in the wild, primarily they eat bamboo. And now where they come from, there's, there are a lot of species of bamboo, but they typically only eat a couple different ones, and which tend to provide the most nutrients. But they'll also eat other plants. And then, like I said before, they are classified as carnivores because they have sharp teeth. So they may on occasion eat something like insects or even a small mammal if they need to, but it's not their preference. They are the vegetarian of the carnivores, if you will. The question is, are they related to giant pandas? Uh, the only relation they really have with the panda, aside from the fact that they can grab bamboo like that, is the fact that they like to eat bamboo. Um, these guys were actually discovered before the giant panda, so some other common names for these guys are the lesser panda, because they're smaller, or the first panda. But they're in a family all of their own. Um, if we had to pick something that they're closer to, it'd be more like a raccoon. Yeah. All right, so it looks like Leo's done, so let's move on over to some other really cool animals with some really cool feet. Over here with Scott and Jen, we have Sagu, she's the little one with Scott, and Josie with Jen. And they're over here just chilling out and eating oats. So if you guys have visited us, especially over Holiday Magic, you'd get a chance to see these guys up close and personal. Of course, they look a little bit different because they had antlers at the time. But they lost theirs for the spring now, and they're going to start growing them back right away. But more importantly, let's talk about their feet. So reindeer have really cool, really cool adaptable feet. They're, we call these ones hooves because they are hoof stock, but they're special because they have um, four toes. The two in the front are the, are the larger ones. They are used, um, they can be used for swimming. They're like big paddles. And then the two on the back are called the dew claws and they use those to help with stability and, and climbing. So the neat thing about the reindeer hooves are that they're completely covered in fur, which helps keep them insulated too, but it also keeps them uh, from slipping, it helps them more stable, and it keeps stuff from getting clogged up in there as they're walking. The fact that their hooves are so wide um, makes it act kind of like a snowshoe as they're walking on snow or on some wet ice or even in the summertime when the ground is kind of damp and just wet, and it keeps them walking on top of all of that stuff. These guys do migrate, um, certain species migrate, and they can walk up to 3,000 miles in a, in a migratory cycle. So they need these special hooves to travel those long distances. Whether And they will have to swim, they will have to walk through ice and goop and all kinds of stuff. So having these specialized hooves lets them do what they do best. Um, in the summertime, the, the, the pads on the feet will soften and let the, the hooves actually spread out a little bit more also, so that helps with traction. But in the winter time when it gets cold, they contract and the hooves will actually harden and that helps them pick through the ice and snow and it helps them forage because they'll use their feet to pick, pick out ice and look for things on the ground to eat. <clears throat> The question is, what temperatures do they live in? So these guys are adapted to, they, you can find them in the north in North America and the north in, in Europe. Um, here at the zoo, they, they prefer the cold weather. They're pretty comfortable right now, but as it gets hot in the summertime, while they don't enjoy it, they can still live in it. And they do have special adaptations to help them keep comfortable. Like um, they'll shed more of their fur almost down to the bare skin sometimes to keep them warm but we also provide a lot of misting fans and a lot of shade for them in the summertime so that they can be nice and comfortable the question is how fast do their antlers grow and how and when do they grow back sorry so their antler it depends on the age of the reindeer so behind scott you're gonna see our oldest reindeer, that's Bunny. She's gonna be five years old uh, in a couple weeks actually. So she lost her antler. She actually lost her antlers early this year. But typically the female reindeer lose their antlers right around March, April time, and then they start growing back. And each year the antlers grow back a little bit quicker and a little bit larger up until they hit like five or six years old, then it might max out in size. So right now Bunny's been growing her antlers um, probably since January they started and they're gonna get probably double that size 
by summertime, which is about breeding season. Now the males will lose their antlers before Christmas and they start growing them right away after that and then they lose theirs or then by summertime they're maxed out as well for breeding season. The question is why don't they have fur on their legs? That's a great question. So uh, as we talked about yesterday, I, I gave an example of camouflage, uh, seasonal camouflage and use the reindeer. So right now the reindeer are actually blowing their winter coat um, which is going to all the most of the whites gonna be removed and they're gonna have a nice short brown coat and so that's what's happening with their legs right now and then in the fall they're gonna start growing that thick coat again their legs are gonna get furrier their fur is gonna get whiter and that's gonna help them blend in with their environment up north right now they're eating oats that is their favorite training tree sometimes we give them a little bit of bread too but uh, they primarily work for the oats. That's not a normal diet item. That's part of their regular diet, but we do train them often so they get a little bit of oats every day. Here at the zoo, they normally would eat uh, pretty much free choice hay, and then we give them a grain that's made for ruminants, it, and um, it's mixed with some sweet feed and some beet pulp and stuff like that too. In the wild, they, they live off of stuff that they can find on the ground. Um, they eat a lot of moss and lichen off of like rocks and trees and stuff. It's one of their favorites. The question is, why do they have a short tail? Well, most deer have short tail, actually. They don't really need a tail um, for balance or grabbing onto anything like that. So um, primarily their tail would just be, could be used as a sign of communication. Like if uh, one spots a predator, they might raise tails up and everybody run. The question is, what's the difference between a caribou and a reindeer? Well, the real difference is there is none. So they are actually in the, they're the same species, same genus species. They're called range of fur tarandus. But what, what the difference would be is location. So in Europe, they typically call them reindeer. And here in the US and like in Canada, they're called caribou. Um, but that's really it. And I mean, I prefer reindeer because, you know, reindeer is kind of a more famous and more well-known word, I think so. Question is how old do they get? So under professional care, an old reindeer would be about 12 years old. They can live around that long. In the wild, not so much. Um, six years, maybe. Uh, and that's due to things like predators. Um, here at the zoo, they have excellent health care. They have room service and maid service. Uh, they're very well taken care of. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you all for joining us here at Brookfield Zoo for Bring the Zoo to You. Again, we are doing this weekdays at 11 o'clock. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs>